December 29, 2018. We are at the borders of Canaan and my eyes cannot stop crying at the condition of the people who claim to be part of the faithful remnant of God. My heart suffers and only in God can I receive consolation. There is no delight for me anymore on this earth because I have been able to see a better earth that is the heavenly one. It was let me known that I am not called to convince anyone of their mistakes. But if they themselves do not humble and ask for heavenly wisdom, they will never have it. I was let known that all arrogance, verbal abuse, and bad disposition will disable us from the true wisdom. Micah chapter 6 verse 8 was the norm of faith for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and also for Daniel and John, the beloved disciple. It is not up to anyone to save anyone's life because there is only one mediator and savior among you, Jesus Christ. But our only task is to exert in the good doing, to pray for one another and to live lives that represent the heavenly embassy well. Do not enter into disputes in who is right, but then go to God in petition and supplication and he will let you know. Stop showing off your human wisdom because for God one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. Be rather jealous for your salvation with fear and trembling, and bear fruit worthy of repentance. So be jealous, because your adversary the devil goes like a lion to destroy not only the body, but what is even more important, the soul. We are on the eve of our great test, and no one will be able to pass it with the help of anyone. How then can you be ecstatic in something else? That is not this for your benefit. Many blind and deaf almost feel the final test, but their mind, given to the reprobation, acclaim, my Lord, is slow to come. Fools, you speak of me, but you live out of me. Don't you know that he who is not grafted unto me will never bear true fruit? Hear that it was said by the prophets, a voice crying out in the desert, straighten the roads and bear fruit worthy of repentance, and you will find rest for your souls. But I tell you that he who is already in me, he bears much fruit and my love is in him. For this you will recognize him. His life is deemed worthless and his only reason for being is to serve in my name. But this perverse generation of lips honors me because their opinions and greatness have their cup full. What then shall I do? I will go to the vineyard and order them to be brought out before reaching my barn and I will set fire on them so that they will never again pollute my vineyard. I will do this to vindicate the voice of my servants, this were violated for generations by those who claim to come in my name, but I never sent them, and thus they will be vindicated. Prepare then, my real flock, for the dwellings are already ready, and the table of sweet delicacies is served. The number is almost complete, and everything is ready. Ask for the streets, who knows how to get to heaven? Then think, have I found anyone? As I live, that you will not find anyone, for all those who have been transferred in life have never walked among you, nor will they walk until the restoration of everything. But if this is already revealed, how then? Do you follow men because of their renown? Perhaps in my word, lamp. Is it not a lamp to your feet and a light for my path? Foolish, lacking in understanding, who live declaring your achievements and fantasies in vain speculations. Don't the signs speak for themselves? Do you not? See, having eyes, and hear, having ears. This period's day is come, 
and everyone who conceals this fact is on the side of my adversary. Am I not the one who governs the universe and everything that exists in it? When I know what is to come, foolish lovers of your ideas more than of God, how then can you have discernment if you only seek your own pleasure? But my people look for me in solitude, in the peaceful whistle, in the great heights. There my power and wisdom is deposited in them and prepares them for the great final event where the light surrounds the earth with my truth. But the foolish despise this encounter and busy in their plans, despising as those says Jehovah. They do not take this time of great value for them to encounter with me for the final preparation. And then what will they say? Lord, in your name we cast out demons. And in your name we did this and that. But I will say, depart from me, evildoers. How many will perish for not following instructions? And he answered, many. How many will live to follow them? And he himself answered, few. What will be enough for the final task? The time is almost fulfilled for my people. But they deceive their hearts with false hopes of a longer future full of vain pleasures. This claim to be Jews, and they are not, but they are jingling symbols. Humble yourselves, humble your hearts, and submit in soul and spirit to the search for the real truth and to the forgiveness of your sins. What else? Will I do with this vineyard? I tilled it, sowed it, cared for it, pruned it, and it did not bear fruit. What then did the one who sent me say? Go and plant another vineyard outside my field. So I went out of my vineyard and planted, and I saw that my care was giving results, and I began to reap fruit. But the one who sent me said, Do not turn back to the old vineyard, but continue in this and gather the best seed and plow more field and sow with the good seed. Then I said, Lord, but didn't the first vineyard also have good seed? It is so, he answered. But the stones, thorns, and birds attacked it because their land was conducive to this. But this is virgin land with much vigor and abundant water. And although the stones and thorns and birds attack, they will not be able to sterilize it at all because I have put my vigor into it. Lord, I answered, didn't you put your vigor in the first one? And he answered, yes, but it stopped flowing the water that gave it life and became sterile. Now then, what will I do? Will I be afflicted by their sterility? And he himself answered, no, by no means. I will go to another field and sow the good seed in it. He who has ears to hear, let him hear, for the understood will understand. There is no prophet in their own land, nor blacksmith in their own blacksmithing. That is why we say he is neither a prophet nor a blacksmith. My administrative angels take note of every act and word, my eyelids, Examine the sons of men who will hide from me and can prevail by his own justice, quick of speech and slow to hear. These are like chaff blown away by the wind. Don't you know that you will be judged and this is already? 
Why do you live in such indifference, hating each other? Who taught you to hate your neighbor? When did I tell you this? Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute and insult you. But this, yes, it is said, hate sin, but love the sinner. Separate yourselves and do not touch the unclean. But your transgression and iniquity have separated you from the good doing. And to the bad they call good and good bad. Crooked and perverse generation that hate the truth and love lies. Your kings and princes deceive you and twist my words into human vanities. Seek me while I can be found and as long as I am near. Soon, very soon, the Holy Spirit will no longer be among you and only those who accepted the early rain will receive the latter rain because you will not be able to receive the latter without the first. What will you do when you see that it is not granted to you? The mighty will shout there and there will be no one to comfort him. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, I will enter in him. I will dine with him and he with me. If you listen to my voice today, do not harden your heart. Only then can you be saved. After this was dictated to me, I was told, Mark chapter 4. Faithfully, I passed it on to you and prayed for each one of you. And I await your prayers for me as well. May the Lord bless you all.